Hey, that's a nice sign. Look at that. That's very appropriate, Neil. Look at that. <laughs> Here they come. And look at the geese coming in now. They're everywhere. What are you going to do, boys? Tell me, what are you going to do? Good common sense. Three birds down, I don't believe it. What a way to go. Dogs in splash. Unbelievable flight this morning. I've come to a very special place today. This is the very place where I shot the first widgeon when I was 11 years old. That was way back in the year 1972. You get lost in here, can you? You can easily get lost. Tom, get healed. That's the right. Uh, it's. Uh, I think it's right at this point, Jim. Sure. Yeah. But your head here. Yeah, I think it's. Today I'm using a 160-year-old black powder muzzle-loading musket, and so far to date I've shot pigeons, I've shot a pheasant and a squirrel with this gun, but I so much want to shoot a goose with it. Here, Jim, cop this. And so, on to the most important chapter of all, and that is accuracy. It may be surprising to learn that not one person in ten can hit the centre of a 30-inch circle on a pattern sheet at 40 yards. During the course of my pattern tests, I covered tungsten, I covered bismuth, and I covered steel, as well as the old... Typical of most cartridges, there are three places on this pattern where that goose can fit without even being touched. Wind. Have you ever thought about the effect of wind on your pattern of your shot string? Good grief, look at this. Now I bought these cartridges because they were clearly marked number three shot on the side of the box and indeed the cartridges. Cool, look at this. There's just about every size shot imaginable here. Size eights up to BBs, look at this look. That's bigger than a BB there. There's hardly a round pellet amongst them. Nearly every single one's got a little tit stuck to them and several of the pellets are actually hollow. I've never seen anything like this before. Out of the hundreds of tests that we've conducted, we have to have a conclusion. And I can tell you... What a wizard, a right and left at pintail. <laughs> now this tide should never be as big as this. This is the first tide for a very long time to cover this marsh or so I'm told. And, uh, yeah, it really is quite extraordinary, but that's the laws of nature. You don't ever want to underestimate that. Anyway, there's widgeon out there somewhere. Jim, let's go find him. Right, Shane, this is, this is the corner, right-hand island corner. Yeah. I think this is probably your best bet. I just started widging, Jim. Oh, look at that. Go, go. Yours, go, yours. Oh, get down. Fetch him on. Fetch him on. Hey, that was a bad little shot there, James. Nice Thank one. Well done. Stay, 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 stay. Fetch him on. Shot. Fetch him on, race. That's what I'm talking about, a breakfast in the bird watching shelter. That's what I'm talking about. How's the breakfast looking there, Jimbo? I'm looking burnt, but they'll be edible. Cracking. Uh, uh, what about my mate Shane there? Are you coming on with them decoys there, boy? Uh, yeah, top tip. Uh, beware icebergs. 
<laughs> Big wear icebergs. And where were all the other wild fowlers underneath the moon in this snow then? Well, they ain't hardcore, are they? They're not made of the real stuff here, Jimbo. Let no. me show them what it's all about. We don't really know if we can actually get back home, but um, who cares? This is wild fowling the green way. We're stupid, absolutely mental. What do you make of it, Shane? <laughs> That's not stupid. This is, this is what it's all about. This is what it's about. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just had a. Why are you the only thing you want that wants to go home? <laughs> <laughs> we can't go home, we're trapped here. Right? That's it.